Welcome to my first video series looking at various aspects of programming and exercise selection. Today we're going to start off with an upper body workout. I want to run through everything from reps, sets, frequency, rest and even exercise selection. If you're looking to gain muscle mass, gain strength, this is certainly the video that you've been looking for. What I want you to do first is hit the subscribe button, drop me a like, and if at any time any questions pop up, drop them down in the comment section below. To start this video, I want to do a little bit of housekeeping. So we want to cover aspects of things like how many reps should you maybe be doing, how many uh, sets should you maybe be doing, and how many exercises and things, just to make sure that you're getting the best out of your upper body workouts. First thing that's sometimes confusing for some people is, whether or not they need to train all the time. Do you need to train two, three, four, five, even six days per week to get the most out of your workouts? This might depend on your training age. So if you're a newbie of one to two years, you might need less frequency than someone who's been training for 10 plus years and a more, at a more advanced level. How many days per week will you need to train upper body to get the best gains in the gym? Gurdjick and colleagues in 2019 looked at training frequency and its influence on muscle hypertrophy. They found that actually training a muscle group just once per week was sufficient to see gains or gains in muscle mass. However, they did suggest that twice per week was probably a slightly better choice. Now that we know how many days per week we should be training, how many sets and reps should we be completing to get the best out of our upper body workouts? Lyle McDonald completed a review on his website, Body Recomposition, trying to establish exactly that. He found that we should be performing between 10 and 20 sets per week per muscle group to be able to get the best out of our upper body workouts. In Lyle's blog post, he also links this meta-analysis by Wenborn in 2007. For optimal growth, they suggest that you should complete between 40 and 70 repetitions twice per week. To round that little section up of sets and reps, in essence, you want to be completing between 10 and 20 sets total per week, and then also in each workout, completing between 40 and 70 repetitions. I'll get into sort of specifics later in the video, but in essence, if you were to train chest, you're looking to do roughly say four times 10 repetitions, and then maybe three times 10 on a different exercise. The last two sections that I want to cover in this little housekeeping piece is rest and how hard we should potentially be training. Rest is only really going to impact the amount of volume that you can complete. Shorter rests don't necessarily negatively impact your ability to contract the muscle and for it to be recruited fully, so that's still going to see some sort of muscular hypertrophic gains. However, if you want to complete four sets of 10 at a certain amount of volume, then resting just a little bit longer might mean you'll perform a little bit better. Now you're also probably considering how hard you should train. Should you be training, you know, absolutely to failure, forced reps, um, all these kind of things. And the matter of fact is that at least one set when you're performing a upper body workout should be close to a proximity of failure. So it should feel really, really hard. The rest of the sets should probably be considered around about an eight out of 10 RPE, or certainly something that's difficult, but short of failure. The exercises that I've selected in this upper body workout example aren't necessarily ones that you absolutely have to stick to. Preference and safety and availability of equipment are important, so changing out some of the, the way that I've set things up for you is probably a good idea. The first exercise I'm, I'm going to talk about is the flat barbell bench press. Now, I use this as a key performance indicator. I'm looking for something that's going to give me a good understanding of whether or not I'm progressively getting stronger and better in the gym at a particular exercise. I find the flat bar by bench press stimulates my pecs, probably one of the best ways in the gym. So I use this to be able to make sure that I'm progressing as much as possible in terms of strength overall. From there, I'm looking for more fullness in my chest, so I'll move on to an incline dumbbell press. I usually keep it around 30 degrees, so I'm not using the front of my delts too much, and I'm focusing mostly on the upper fibers of my pecs. 
I use this as an accessory movement. I do want to still see some sort of progression in the movement. However, I tend to focus more on things like squeezing, feeling the muscle um, contracting, rather than necessarily being an out and out performance movement. Moving on to back training, there's a couple of different ways you want to do this. First is a horizontal pull, and then second is potentially a vertical pull. Now, I want to develop many different portions of my back, from the upper portion of the back to the width of my lats. The position of your elbows may contribute towards this. So the first horizontal movement that I'll use is a slightly wide neutral grip machine cable row. This can also be anything like a chest supported row where your elbows are allowed to flare out just slightly. This means that you're gonna be training more of your upper back, your rhomboids and your traps. From there, I move on to a, a vertical pull, which will be something like a neutral grip lat pull down. You'll see great stimulus in your lats and your back to be able to create that sort of definition and thickness and wide uh, portions of your lats. Now we move on to the part of the programming that I'll discuss as fluff work. This is the arms and delts. Arms do play a role within a lot of the movements that we've discussed. For example, the bench press will be long head of your tricep and your biceps will be playing role, a role within most of the pulling movements that we've gone over. That being said, they haven't necessarily been trained to failure as previously discussed in this video. So with that, you want to select one bicep movement and one tricep movement that you'll take at least one set to failure overall. You then might consider one or two more sets added onto that to be able to get the most out of your arm training. One small consideration for triceps would be that your bench press may train more of your long head of your tricep. So doing some sort of push down to train the other small head will probably play a good role in overall tricep development. From there, you might want to consider some lateral raises and potentially some rear delt flies, just to finish off the delts based on the fact that they've been again, again trained during any kind of pressing movements that you've been doing that upper body workout. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, like I said, hit that subscribe button, give me a like, and if you have any questions at all about your upper body workouts, check them down or ask questions down in the comment section below. I'll round up the video there and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. They found that one training a w <laughs> overall gains in the gym. Now I'm so bad at this. <laughs> by Wormborn in 2007. This meta analysis was an intermediate individual.